get it. Uh, anyway, you want to, before we get into this, some of this rapid fire stuff, you want to get into uh, this Randy Orton bully Ray situation? Sure. Yeah, I, uh, I, I mean, I learned more about it today than I knew the other day. But all right, I'll give everyone the Cliff Notes version of it. Over the weekend, Ring of Honor had their pay per view War of the World. One of the matches featured Bully Ray, Jay Briscoe, and Mark Briscoe, Briscoe versus Hiroki Goto, Champaretta, and Rocky Romero for the six man tag titles. There was one part in the match where Bubba Ray did a dive off the top rope onto the uh, the uh, participants, the the opponents, and he put the photo on Twitter and he just wrote one word: dive. Okay, so current wrestling trainer Rip Rogers uh, basically had a little problem with it, and Rip Rogers on Twitter wrote the following: I quote. Every every indie match now, handshake, drawn out move exchange, this is awesome chant, strike exchange, dive, no sell, indie strong style, dive, more strikes, no sells, dive, flippy floppy sequence, dive, hit everyone with each other's finisher, then humpty dumpty we all fall down, fight forever chant, rinse and repeat until every move is useless and means nothing, dive, take on safe shot, that looks like shit and hurts like hell. Then roll up finish. Handshake and hug after match. Everyone's hands raised. All these guys chant. Go home and type on social media. Thanking your opponents and company for the match. And telling others they should book these guys. Dot, 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 dot. Dive. So Randy Orton retweeted it. And all he wrote was dot, 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 Dive. So apparently Bully Ray got a little bit annoyed at it. And, um, you know, they had a little back and forth. And this led to Randy Orton writing on Twitter to Bubba Ray. LOL, there's a difference between a young, hungry talent diving and an old, out of shape uh, vet falling. Basically saying that, you know, Bubba Ray is, you know, old and out of shape and he didn't dive. He just fell. Yeah. And this basically went back and forth where, you know, Bully Ray's girl, Velvet Sky, said, wow, what a dick thing to say, you know, mm. towards Randy Orton. Uh, Batista absolutely loved what Randy Orton said, and he wrote, that's my guy. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of back and forth going on. And then this ended with uh, Randy Orton apologizing to Bully Ray and indie wrestling fans and Randy Orton said, and I quote, sorry to the indie marks, indie guys and old timers who do dives, who took offense. Just having a good time over a few drinks in Denmark, closing the SmackDown live tour while beating Raw in making over $5 million in the last 11 shows. Now I know to some that doesn't equate to a standing room only crowd of 150 people <laughs> Paying $8 at an armory somewhere. But in the big boy world, that's called putting asses in the seats. That's so, true. so enjoy your flips, your dives, and 20 mm. super kicks per match. To each their own, I will go dive back into my 13th title run and wow. get ready to flip when my bank statement comes this month. Dot, 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 dot. Headlock. Sorry, that's a mic drop. Uh, winner, <laughs> winner Orton. Sorry, that's that's true. It's a, it's. It, I mean, the looks and Rip Rogers before any of the young Mark Bucks say anything. Rip Rogers was never a big superstar in the business, but he was a established journeyman who worked the territories. I mean, I remember in the late seventies when I got into buying wrestling magazines in seventy nine. Rip Rogers was in Memphis. He was in. He was all over. He's a pretty good trainer too. He's got a reputation of being a pretty good trainer. He's got a lot of respect of a lot of guys in the industry, young and old. Um, so he kind of started it. Randy Orton kind of jumped on the bandwagon, but it seemed like it became nothing about Rip Rogers and everything about Randy Orton. That's the interesting well, part. I mean, Rip, Rip started the whole thing, but I guess he's not a big name to a lot of people, so it was easier to jump on Orton, don't you think? Yeah, my first reaction to it was Randy Orton needs to have a couple of drinks before he cuts promos on SmackDown from now on. Yeah, no, I, mean, <laughs> I agree with you. I mean, that was... A mic drop, whatever you can say what you want. Oh, but and also it's weird because Bully Ray's 
you know, really part of the establishment. He's been an office guy before. He's been on the political side of things too, politi- politicking uh, for the Dudleys and everything. And him, his run, as you remember, DT is a single star and TNA. So it's kind of it's two older veteran guys. They, they, you know, yeah, they're putting down the young, you know, in the indie guys in a way. But it's to me, it's Bubba Ray. Uh, trying to maybe be something he's not anymore, and Randy Orton calling him out. Well, I, from what I understand, maybe the two guys were never the best of friends no. when they were in the company. So I don't. There was no young guy involved, and even Batista gets his little things in. Batista's a big star now, so he can say whatever he wants. Uh, but and Rip Rogers is twice as old school as all those guys. So to me, it seemed like a bunch of guys arguing about the state of wrestling, where they were, where they're at, who they are. I, it didn't. There was no young guys involved in this discussion, was there? No. Did they, any young guys chime in on this? No, but I, I will say this. You know, um, CBS Sports did an interview with Orton not too long ago, about five months ago. And Orton said something back then, and before I go any further, you know, before I stir up any controversy or anybody that wants to stir any anything up, I want to just say this, and it's kind of premature because I haven't given an explanation yet. I actually agree with both Randy Orton and Bully Ray, and I'll explain why a little bit. But Orton said this back in December, and it's very quick. And this is Orton's defense and what he said. And... and I'll get into my comment on it in a moment. But Orton said this. He said, and I quote, I remember walking into our locker room, you know, years ago, and there's a few guys I can't even name, but you had a crew of guys that were very intimidating and commanded respect. You could also go to them to get advice, and you would get that advice. Nowadays, a lot of the younger guys, I find myself and I see other guys that have been around having to go to them with suggestions on how to make their product better, whether it's selling or facial expressions or just slowing down a little bit. But no, they're not coming to us. It's almost like some of these guys that have been in the in the indies for 15 years think they know everything. That's probably the only negative difference that sticks out to him now. Orton's biggest problem is is something, and I'm not trying to take credit for this, but I invite anyone to go search the archives, and I know longtime listeners will remember this. Kevin and I's biggest problem with the X Division over the years, and this goes back to fucking Illick Skipper. All right, what Rip Rogers said now is what Kevin and I have been saying for about seven or eight years now, at least. What did we always used to say with the X Division? It's like. 1,550 pound undertakers in the ring. Person gets hit with a finishing maneuver. Five seconds later, they're up. And what are they more concerned about? Hitting their finishing maneuver instead of selling a, an actual move. Yeah. And, and d- d- that's why I always said on this show over the years. Now, obviously, he's not on TV anymore. But who is the guy that I told everyone out there that if you're an up-and-coming wrestler, you should pay attention to his indie work? Tony Mamaluke. That motherfucker would take bumps and sell like he was dead. But he yeah. put but he put on a performance also. And that's the problem. And and this is not anything new. This has been years now. And this is something that Kevin and I have been saying for fucking year after year after year after year. Ring of Honor has its place in the wrestling world. That's why I stick up for Bully Ray. New Japan, you Lucha Underground. Everything is a different style, okay? So to each his own. You know, if you don't like, you know, you know, kick, dive, everyone gets up like Undertaker, gets hit with finishing maneuver, gets up five seconds later, hits their finishing maneuver, shake hands, hug, everybody's on Twitter, we love everyone, stop the hate, no bullying, we all respect each other, we're all family, I kick your ass, but I will suck your dick five minutes after the event, you know, it, that, if that's what you like, follow it, that's, there's nothing, to each his own. But when it carries over and people start saying, well, and, and Finn Balor is a great excuse for that. Mm. Finn Balor, you know, if you follow his career leading up to him making it to WWE, he was one of these indie darlings and Finn Balor is being domesticated to the WWE standards. I'm not saying that WWE is more right than Ring of Honor or anyone else. But I say this, look at Ring of Honor's revenue and attendance and ratings and look at WWE's revenues and attendance and ratings and look at even TNA's revenues. And so there's enough 
room out there for everyone to have their little niche. You know, wrestling is not just one style and nothing else. So I agree with both sides of it. But the one thing that has been pissing me off for at least seven, eight, maybe more than years than that, and I know it has for you also, is the lack of psychology in fucking wrestling and everybody's more concerned with a YouTube fucking moment or a fucking 15 second, you know, Instagram video clip moment of an unbelievable move they could do. So, hey, everyone, look at me, flash your cameras instead of telling a story in the ring. Yeah. You know, so uh, but I, I, and I, the, the one thing I had a kick out of the most was this. You know, Matt Hardy made some comments, CM Punk and others, but out of everyone, who comes out of the woodwork to make a comment? Fucking Loki. Oh, really? Loki actually said to Orton, he said, unfortunately, you're protected in the WWE. Come out to the real world and test your tantrum with adults. No, oh, boy. And, and, I, and I wrote, because uh, his, you know, his Twitter handle has the war, word warrior in it, and I said, wow, that's coming from a warrior who fucking threw a chair at a girl backstage at an indie wrestling event you know yes it was many years ago and he might have matured since then but you know loki ain't no fucking you know you know pristine fucking model person out there so i i just found that funny you know he out of everyone loki you know i just yeah yeah. so so i don't know overall what did you think about you you lean towards one side over another i mean what's your thoughts on that i mean i'm not i'm not i'm Listen, I'm as bored and yawning up a storm as with Randy Orton as champ uh, as anyone at this current stage. And, you know, you can mention all the House of Horrors match or whatever, but Randy Orton is a great worker. I never denied. And I think, and I'm in agreement with a lot of people from YouTube to Twitter and people who have posted this. I think Randy Orton could have worked well in any era, including the NWA, including back in the old days of uh, Mid South, ECW. I think Orton would have worked in any era. I think he's a five tool player he, he's he's a great wrestler can't take that away from him. boring yeah uh but i you know i thought a lot of people online were all about the skills randy Orton has the skills very v- rarely botches spots very precision in the ring is, is not what's so important um you know it's like it's a big hypocrisy going on right now in wrestling this one could do this this one could do that but if we don't like this one we don't support this one but orton has always been a guy who spoke his mind i, I can appreciate that he's never been a favorite of mine uh, you know, I watch it when he's on, but it, I, he's been boring me as the champ. I don't think he should be the champ again, but he does make money. He does sell merch. I looked up his, uh, his record. Uh, you know, he, he's, you know, he does well for himself and he's made money and he, he's earned money and maybe he's kind of been lackadaisical in other spots. But, um, Bubba Ray and him, I listen, you know, we, we have a history of Bubba Ray ourselves. He's a guy who speaks his mind too. Uh, I kind of am enjoying the two of them going at it, to be honest with you, DT. It's kind of like watching, like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, two two people you don't like. Well, you know, I don't know personally, but two wrestlers I don't really care for. But it's an interesting little battle. But Bubba Ray was part of the same establishment he was. You know, Bubba, they left the WWE. They're doing what they have to do now for work or at Ring of Honor or whatever. But it, to me, it's just two veterans who probably didn't like each other in the first place going at it a little bit online. It, I don't think it, it's anything more than that. I think it's them, the two of them. It's it's about them. Agreed. And they're making it about something. Agreed. Agreed. You know, at the end of the day, like I said, I think everyone, you know, should just understand that, you know, there's different styles, different niches in wrestling. I mean, some will never be as big as others. And I think everyone out there should just, you know, like what they like. And that's it. You know, I just... You know, I mean, we're no, I agree on both sides, but I do uh, find it frustrating about what I see on the indie circuit quite a bit. I mean, it's it's ridiculous at times. No, it's it's true. You're right. It's uh, you know, there's, there's but this no, is not the, the new. This is not the new. I mean, we've this is, seen this, this has been going on. The art of selling is almost dead. I mean, what do you think? What what what? DT, remember when Ricky Morton and then got not, you know inducted into the Hall of Fame? What was everybody saying? Those guys know how to work. They know how to sell. You could say what they want about their haircuts and their, you know, their look or whatever or how they've aged. But in the ring, in their prime, that's how you sell a match. You know, people with Jim Cornette or Paul Heyman would say, sit a young guy in front of the TV and put on Ricky Morton or Rick Steamboat. That's how you sell as a babyface. That's how you sell a move, sell a finish, sell that you're hurt, sell that you're fighting back, sell that, that you know, you're on your last breath uh, by taking that move. It's almost It almost killed you. Uh, but the the art of that is gone almost today. It's the art yeah. of selling is gone. Yeah, you know it really is, and the indies aren't making it any better. No, 